Hi, my name is Steve James, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 435, Guidelines for Watching Yourself. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior. And take your Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're still looking at keys to walking by the Spirit or criteria to walking by the Spirit. And this morning we're doing something that I've never done before. But we're going to look at guidelines for watching over ourselves individually. Mm -hmm. Things we'll see in this section of God's Word that we're going to read, we're going to see things that we can look at and notice and watch over and help us to walk more in the Spirit of God without judging anyone else. This is, we see this in God's Word, and we make our decisions, and we do not judge anyone else. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient or profitable or beneficial, okay? And he's saying unto me. He's talking about himself. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me because of the accomplished works of Jesus Christ. We're set at liberty. But I will not be brought under the power of any. If there's something out there that would bring us into its power, we want to stay away from that. We need to decide that by the scope we know of God's Word. And this subject is handled very closely again in Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I want you to go there, and in verse 23. Sounds very familiar here. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Sounds almost the same. It is the same. All things are lawful to me, but all things edify not. See, we're to edify one another. We're to know God's word, teach God's word, and edify. In Timothy, it's like, make sure you're doing the doctrine and edifying and keep on the word of God. It's in the middle of the sandwich, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're to edify. I look at edifying here as like the love of God. Is it loving? If it's loving, you'll be edifying, Mm -hmm. that type of thing. But this section of God's Word has a lot of interesting things that I want to point out to you. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 1. And just read some of these things. Mm -hmm. This is like the context of those two verses that we looked at. It's not like it, it is. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Paul's bringing up something here. You got a problem with a brother? Well, why don't you go to the unbelievers to find out what to do? That's what he's saying. That's what you're doing. I'll continue reading. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? We got a Holy Spirit. How much more the things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, Set them to judge who are the least esteemed in the church, or they're not even in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brethren, go to the law with the brother, and that before unbelievers? Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to the law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? Why would any believer allow himself to be defrauded? 
because they know that God's going to take care of them. We can take a loss. We can take a problem by a brother in Christ so that we know God will take, take care of us. It's better to suffer a, a wrong or a fall than to bring them through in front of unbelievers. And in my life and counseling, I have talked with people that wanted to go to situations like this. And I told them, I said, you won't like the results. Whenever you give to the state, tell us what to do. You won't like it. You won't. And whenever I've said that and they went anyhow, that's exactly what they found out. The state doesn't care about us as believers they just want to hurt everybody because it's fair you see what <laughs> i'm saying so i just soon have a fault i'll take the fall because i know god's going to take care of me that's the reason why verse 8 says nay ye do wrong in default and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That word means sexual defect. When you go to the unbelievers to judge you, that's the type of people that you're having judge you. That's why it doesn't work. Nor abuses of themselves with mankind, neither thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revile is nor extortion is extortion means to take something by force shall inherit the kingdom of god and such were some of you but ye are washed ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god see that's why we can take fault it's we can take the wrong and it's better that we do than to get involved in this type of thing. These type of people. It's just better to do that. Then it's that verse that we started with. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. The meat for the belly and the belly for me but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. Whenever you see the word fornication in God's word, it means two things. It means what well, we think about fornication, but the greater meaning is going after other gods. We're forsaking our God, the true God, to go after another God. But for the Lord, the Lord for the body, and God hath, hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up us by his own power. We're going to be raised too. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take them, the members of Christ and make them member of a harlot? God forbid. See, we're to, no matter what, the believers going through the one that you have a problem with they're still a believer and we still have to edify and we still have to love them with the love of god because they're going to be there at the return and going to unbelievers for help is not the answer that's what it's saying here know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. A situation like that won't work well. Not that it can't work. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What, know ye not that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought 
with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Mm -hmm. See that we have a higher way of thinking of things. When these situations come up in our lives, we got to think about it. And these are written for us. This section of God's word is written for us. Do we can see God's point of view in these types of matters? Okay? So we have that information. Chapter 7, verse 1, same idea. I mean, different subject, but the same idea. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And that means help himself. In the lands and times of the Bible, you know, 2,000 years ago, that's just the way the culture was. But God is saying, no, it's not good to do that for a man to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due beleverance or good feeling. Okay? So the wife, the husband's supposed to do that for the wife. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. This must mean that there needs to be some negotiation going on. <laughs> some figuring this out. And I could counsel a lot about that, but I don't want to. I want to keep going. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, for a period of time, that ye may give yourselves unto fasting and prayer, devotion of God and prayer. Sometimes I've had to say to Rosa, well, I'm, I'm going to El Salvador for a week or two. So th there was a time that I was leaving her, right? But we're gonna get we're gonna get back together and come back together again again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. See, it's not a rule. Not a rule. Paul is saying this will help you to understand this. This whole section is to help us to understand God's heart on things. Okay? For I would that all men were even as myself, and he was single. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, another after that. That's why you can't judge another person. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. It'll be good for you to stay single. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And we all know what that means. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. But let not the husband put away his wife in divorce. That's not where to go there. Go to uh, verse 28. I want to, this whole section is a few chapters long, so I'm just going to skip around a little bit to, to show you some, some things. Verse 20 says, But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, and I spare you. He's saying, if you get married, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. I'm going to read it to you. But the, the trouble is you're going to have to take care of one another. If you're not married, you don't have to do that. And I understand what it's going to say here because I lived through some of this. But this I say, brethren, time is short. It remaineth that both they which have wives be as though they have none, and they and they 
that weep as though they weep not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. For they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of the world passes away. But I would you have without carefulness that he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. And that's the trouble that Paul was talking about. But he's also saying, hey, the time is at hand, and you got to act like you're not married. You got to do this. That's why all things are lawful for me. But is it expedient? Is it profitable? Is it loving? Or will I be brought under the power of? We That's the thing we have to figure out and judge for ourselves. We don't ever look judging everyone else's life. If they decide to get married, great. If they decide to be sing single, great. And other things in this whole section, like bringing people to the court or not. It's very important to understand this. Chapter 8 deals with food offered to idols. And it goes through the things we need to know about that. How to handle that situation. Let's go to chapter 9, verse 19. For though I be free from all, see that's all things are lawful to us, see that? Yet have I made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. See, he's changed in the way he deals with things on an individual basis, right? To them that are without the law as without the law, not being without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. That was his heart on that. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that is that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now, they do it for a corruptible crown, but we for a incorruptible. I, therefore, so run, not as uncertainly, but mm -hmm. so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, mm -hmm. lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. And he didn't want to do that. I want to go back and talk about married versus unmarried. One of the things that that I read a little bit of, but if you're unmarried, you can, you can give yourself more for God. You can really do things for God because you don't have to take care of your wife. And then later, even the kids and the children, you do have more responsibilities you have to watch out for. But if you're single, you can go whole hog for whole hog for God. I've done lots of teachings to young people, teenagers, about this stuff that's in chapter seven. And I said, when you're single, that's when you can really do things for God. But it really has nothing to do with being a young person or an older person. A person of any age can say, you know what? I'm going to spend these years working hard for God. Or I'm going to spend these years being married and with the children, but I'm still going to do my best for God because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I got married and had kids and great kids, and they all had to come with me. You know what I mean? What I was doing. Well, they did. There, she's still here. 
got to. It was because I had to. All right. Let's go to chapter 10. And I want to go to verse 16. And I'll read it. And you guys can read it with me. It says, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? When we do a communion, isn't it about the blood of Christ? We're, remember, we're remembering what Jesus Christ did for us. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Well, yeah, it is. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Are they not part of that? Well, yeah, they are. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifices to idols is anything? And the truth is, they're not anything. Hmm. A statue made of wood is a piece of wood, has no power in it. Out of metal, no power in it. You can eat something and someone can say this is sacrifice to the sun god. It's still a state. And that's all it is. Believers know that. Okay? So believers don't get shook up about that. That's what it, that's saying. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that we, ye should have fellowship with devils. Well, I don't even want to. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient or profitable, depending on what you're doing it with and who's there. All things are lawful to me, but all things edify not. So these are... What you can see in these chapters, which would take a little time to read, you can see God points out different things that happen in life and how you can think about them. And it's up to you to think about them and what you allow in your life and what you won't allow in your life. That's what it's all about. Let no man <laughs> seek his own, but every man another's. It says here wealth, but it's in italics. We, we care about what another person thinks. That's the edifying part. That's the love of God. We do all things in love. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Another way to look at it, for thinking sake. What do you think? If it bugs you, don't eat it. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go whatsoever is set before you eat asking no question for conscience sake for thinking sake see we know that a steak is a steak we don't get uptight about it but for conscience sake if you what how are you thinking about it but if any man say unto you this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. Eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake. What you're doing is you're letting that person know that we don't want to eat at a table of devils. We want to stand mm -hmm. for God. And we know that we could eat it, but we're not going to do that because it's not edifying. It's not of love. You see that? And these are the things that we decide on our own as we live through life. And we decide not to judge others either. 
This is this is these things are to help us walk with God, and we are not to judge others which do or do not these things, like marry or get not get married, what they eat and what they don't eat. Okay, Bert, did I read? Uh, it's twenty nine is where I am now, right? Mm -hmm. Conscience, I say, not thy own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience. For if I, by grace, be partakers, why am I evil spoken of for that which I gave thanks? <laughs> Whether th therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. We don't want to offend anybody if they're Jew, Gentile, or church of God. And this is, to me, is very unique. This is a foundational verse that tells us that there's three different groups of people. But we don't want to offend anybody. Why? That we might save some. That we might be able to help some. That's the lesson that's being taught here. Verse 33. Even as I please all men, it's in italics, in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. And that's the reason. So we, you see the reason why God does things and why this is put in here what one person allows and what another doesn't allow in their life is nothing for us to judge. We just, for ourselves, read these things and understand what it's talking about. Chapter 11 gets into a lot of customs, like your head, long hair, shaw hair, wearing a hat, covered or uncovered. All culture and means almost nothing to us today's society. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read it. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.